Well, there's a lot of groups preparing. We're looking to take 30,000 young people from around the United States to World Youth Day in Krakow. Um, we're also preparing even more who are going to celebrate stateside in the United States uh, in their home diocese, their home uh, parishes. So with all that preparation, local diocesan leaders are, are doing their best to, uh, uh, to prepare their groups and uh, the U.S. bishops are helping them out with resources and uh, opportunities to uh, connect. Um, we've had a couple of national, we have had and we will continue to have a couple of national gatherings. Uh, we just finished a national Catholic youth conference where 23,000 young people from around the United States uh, converged for uh, a week of talks and music and prayer and uh, adoration. Um, so that was one way, certainly a lot of young people are preparing for pilgrimage. Do you have your own, maybe uh, some of your own private experience with World Youth Days? Maybe you attend already in other World Youth Days? Sure. I've been, this will be my sixth World Youth Day. Um, I began, uh, I was a young person at uh, World Youth Day in Denver, Colorado. Um, it was at that World Youth Day that I, I, I met John. I didn't actually meet him in person, but I felt like I met him because I was one of the, one of the many who was there. Um, but that was my first experience with World Youth Day was Denver in my own home country. Um, I've been to the World Youth Days in Toronto, in Cologne, in Madrid, in Rio de Janeiro, and now in Krakow. Uh, and uh, all of them have had a special place in my heart. My first experience was Denver, um, but every experience thereafter uh, has given me um, yet another glimpse. Um, I've, um, this will be my second time celebrating with Pope Francis. I've had two times celebrating World Youth Day with Pope Benedict and twice with John Paul II. Um, and each was fabulous in their own way. Uh, very moving. This meetings with the Pope for you, this meeting with Jesus also, what was, what kind of impact that make for your life? So, I remember when I was a young person in Denver, John Paul II came out in Mile High Stadium uh, in Denver, Colorado, and he said, don't be afraid to proclaim the gospel from the mountains. Don't feel, say it in the, uh, preach the gospel in the street corners, uh, you know, in your workplaces, in your schools, wherever you are. And that call resonated for me. It was a very unique experience. The, it had been raining all day, and just at that one moment, it had stopped raining, and uh, and it, it was almost God pointing me towards uh, towards something that said, "Listen to this." And so from that moment on, I felt that that was a call um, for me to to dedicate my life to the church. So um, since that time, I've kind of built myself up to serve the church in many ways. I've been a youth minister. I've been I worked for diocese. I now work for the U.S. bishops. Um, but really. Uh, the call of John Paul II when he said, you know, proclaim the gospel always uh, and don't be afraid. Uh, that was certainly something that inspired me to lead the life I did. You know, the best way for me to get past the fear um, is to surround myself with people, with community, with other people who shared those values, who shared that experience. So for me that has always been being a part of a youth ministry, a young adult ministry, a campus ministry, being part of a parish that was very supportive, um, surrounding myself with friends and colleagues uh, who also believed and who also shared the passion. Um, because with, you know, that's the one thing World Youth Day, I think, teaches the church is that we are all one human family and we're all a community, especially one Catholic family. Uh, world Youth Day is a chance for the, us to meet each other and to support each other and to see all the people around the world who share those values. So what World Youth Day did for me and how I was not, I mean, of course I'm afraid sometimes, but, the, uh, but what supported me through all of this uh, has been the the community that I have surrounded myself with over the years, uh, and that has supported me in my uh, in my desire to proclaim the gospel, to live the gospel, to share the gospel. Um, it's been in in the context of that relationship, that family, that community. This World Youth Days is about uh, mercy. 
do you know this prayer, the Divine Mercy? And if if so, what's that? What is this prayer for you? You know, I'm just beginning to learn more about it. It's not been something that I've known much about, but um, as I become to know about it, um, it's been incredibly helpful in my work with young adults. Um, young adults are really in need of compassion and mercy, um, and so for me, it has helped me to uh, minister to young adults with mercy, with compassion, with love, um, not to begin with a sense of, of judgment and condemnation, but rather a sense of mercy and love. So for me, learning this, this the chaplet has helped me to become a better minister and to become a more merciful minister in the church. What do you think those young people from United States, but also from around the world, what they should receive here? What they should take back from here, from Krakow? Um, no, we're here. Are we here? <laughs> um, so, the young people from the United States, uh, we're hoping that many of them are inspired to become missionaries, um, to really go back into their homes and to be, uh, to to become leaders in the church, to become leaders in their world, uh, inspired by that call of mercy. So hopefully when they go back, um, they will make their country a more merciful place, a more compassionate place, a place of peace, a place of, of uh, fraternity and brotherhood. That's what I hope will come uh, out of this, and that that message of divine mercy will become a part of the, the ethos of the United States of America, that mercy is something that our young people introduce to our culture. That would be wonderful.